I am joined now by Jen Dion and James Rondinelli. Thank you both so much for joining us. Congratulations to you for winning an MRS Outstanding Young Investigator Award. Uh, Jen, to you, your talk is titled Inside Out, Visualizing Chemical Transformation and Light Matter Interactions with Nanometer Scale Resolution. You also use a quote from the Pixar movie Inside Out. It goes, do you ever look at someone and wonder what's inside? How does that relate to the work that you do? Oh yeah, um, well thanks for the question. My group is really interested in understanding somewhat complex dynamic systems. Um, the movie Inside Out basically personifies different emotions to give us a glimpse into um, perhaps one of the most complex dynamic systems, namely a child's mind. Um, my group um, also tries to use, uh, you, I guess, new ways of um, kind of visualizing what's happening within nanoscale systems, especially those relevant to energy and biomedical systems. So is that a quote that can be related to scientists in general? Yeah, probably broadly speaking, I'd say most scientists have uh, a curiosity as to how things are working. Um, our group, I guess, uh, funnels that curiosity through the lens of photonics and plasmonic approaches that um, give us uh, methods of kind of visualizing things in real time and, and with very high resolution. Did you always have a curiosity about what's going on inside things? I did, yeah. I think you can trace that all the way back to my childhood. Um, I was especially interested or inspired by nature. Um, the blue morpho butterfly is one particularly good example where the wings of the butterfly are really iridescent and blue. Um, and I eventually learned that was due to structural color, basically how a transparent nanomaterial or a transparent material is structured on the nanoscale, um, giving rise to photonic band gaps that give rise to really beautiful iridescence. That's fascinating. Um, so I think, yeah, the combination of optics plus seeing how things work, looking inside, uh, drove a lot of my research interest today. Well, James, to you, you've been looking into what you call new tricks in older complex oxides. Tell us about your work. Yeah, right. So we're interested in materials that exhibit new functionality. And so our approach, while we recognize that discovery of new materials is exceedingly difficult, we've been using new modern techniques in, uh, in the application of quantum mechanical approaches to find new phenomena in older materials in the sense that they've already been synthesized or they exist. And we're trying to understand what gives rise to those interesting properties in this older class of materials. So finding new uses, for example, of older materials. And how did you go about entering the field of material science? Yeah. Yeah, so my entry into material science was a little circuitous. Uh, originally, I wanted to be a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big change. Um, and, uh, yeah, so quite a bit of change. Uh, my interest was in patent law, and mm -hmm. I was interested in understanding the technical side more so than the legal side of what gives you know rights for certain technologies. And so at that point, as an undergraduate, I transitioned into doing more research than sort of uh, the legal side of technology. So how do you think uh, your practical applications uh, have or will result from your work? Yeah, so many of the materials we focus on, uh, I would say, would be, find, would be found in new electronic technology. So we're looking for materials which will either provide lower power uh, applications or higher performance uh, applications. And this could be materials for transistor technologies, microelectronics, as well as new optical materials. So the ability to convert light to different frequencies. And so for you, Jen, what do you see as some of the big challenges on the horizon? Oh yeah, um, so within my own specific field, um, we're interested in understanding both um, energy storage devices um, and then also uh, understanding, I guess, how we can more efficiently sort um, chiral molecules in uh, pharmaceutical and agrochemical um, industries. On the energy storage front, what we're trying to do is look within um, individual nanoparticles to figure out which shapes and sizes and crystallinities uh, might be best for maximizing the capacity of energy storage devices and also maximizing the kinetics. So that way you could have a battery um, that you know, holds more charge and basically enables more charging and discharging cycles. So um, interesting. Well, thank you both for sharing that. Uh, Jen Dion and James Rondinelli, thank you both for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. No problem.